Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, greetings and salutations. Today I have the most phenomenal Michael Hudson, who I have been probably stalking at Bitstocks for quite a while, to be honest with you, and also on Instagram because you have some fantabulous pictures of beautiful places like Egypt, yeah, which I found fabulous. So I know within um, the ecosphere, uh, things have changed a little bit for you. So you so graciously and kindly offered to come and talk to me a couple of weeks ago on Instagram. So I just followed up. So here you are. Really nice to see you, Michael. How are you doing? It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Yeah. Thank you for having me on. It's, well, my pleasure's all mine, to be honest with you. So first of all, then, let's talk well, about that. Quiet. Quiet. Yeah. Quiet. Yeah. Quiet. <laughs> well, let's talk about the elephant in the room first. Elephant in the room. Elephant first. Yeah. So grab, well, grab. Yeah. What's been up then? Well, I think my journey in this space has been quite well documented online, right? Um, and yeah, and and what we're building and what we've been trying to to build and attempt to build is ultimately core infrastructure that we need in this industry. In light of some of the challenges that I saw coming our way, some challenges I'm sure we'll get into uh, a little bit later in our conversation, um, but ultimately just core fundamental like infrastructure. Now, the narrative of BSV is a difficult landscape to navigate, as we all know. Yeah, I agree. Now, what I felt and still do, in fact, is even more relevant now than it was three years ago when we started with Gravity, is we need a second pillar in this space to show some independence, right? And also to have like some mature neutrality in how we interact and mm -hmm. offer bridges, olive branches to other people within this wider industry. So uh, let's call it crypto uh, industry. Um, but also just in terms of making bridges in traditional finance and other traditional uh, uh, lines of business to try and dilute away from the brand mark we we have, right? Because it's a very hostile space, mm -hmm. cryptocurrency mm -hmm. industry. But what is quite uniquely challenging, I guess, for BSV is BSV start to become quite hostile even within its, its community. Right? Yeah, yeah. But all that being said, the business opportunity is quite clear, is that we're going to go through this transition and we're going to need to have core infrastructure so we can get out of this transition. Uh, and the Gravity brand has always been built on that goal, that ambition to be that. So we started off obviously as a fiat on-ramp and off-ramp for UK and Europe for people to acquire BSV. And up until last week, we were still the best place uh, in order to acquire by definitely yeah 100 percent. i mean like you know i'm going to chip in never had a problem at all ever and the customer service and the support has been phenomenal second to none and they you know it's just been a really smooth process and i think a lot of people will agree with me as well you've been like a saving grace within in the uk definitely and probably further europe as well so yeah i i want to sort of thank you for all the work and effort that you did do i mean i've followed a lot of your story since february 2020 because that's when i met you at the first well the london coin geek and like i know i've sat and watched your developers make 3d models and god knows what else and stuff you know um, and i've been to a couple of your events and they've been really cool and just like you're so hands-on with everybody and then i think that's a really nice thing as well because you know all your customers in person um but yeah, it's been is like for for me, and you had the iOS launch, which was phenomenal. I think you were the first people to be able to do anything like that as well. You you know, and there's never been a problem ever, ever. So yeah, I, 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 I want to thank you. For that. I just want to thank you for that, and that's been the overwhelming feedback, right? And to mm -hmm. me, it makes me proud because it's proof and testament of how capable our team was. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. How passionate the team was. Uh, and the best aspects and highlights we all have as a group is actually those very things that you mentioned, interacting with people, right? Yeah. And actually having that direct relationship with people, which is why we've done like the podcast for a major thing, because with the podcast, it just enabled me to communicate with you guys, right? And, mm. and 
hear of other people in the space. Ultimately, I'm still staying and trying to stay very focused on what we're doing and what we're building. Uh, yeah. But I, I wanted to to make sure that there's a pillar being built here. Right now, I thought also it's important to try and raise and acquire funding uh, away from traditional sources uh, yeah. in, in this space. Right again, because of this whole pillar narrative, having some independence and showing that there's. Uh, there's more people here with independent, clear thinking for reasons that need to be looked into, right? So, yeah. so those reasons only are, we do genuinely have the best technology in this industry, right? Bar none, we have the best technology. And as my own development has matured over the nine years that I've been involved in this space, I've even got to a place where, because on one side, like I say, I'm. I can say and moan about being frustrated about the uh, negatives that come along with the BSV journey. But I completely it's, understand. It's, but it is the best technology, right? Yeah. So if another, and this is how I've managed to network very well with other people in other industries and other projects, et cetera, because like I get it while I'm there because the financial aspect of it, cool. But they also understand that I'm balanced and mature enough that if they show me their technology is superior, they will have my ear. Like genuinely, they, they will have my ear. But what we've seen thus far is there isn't any more superior technology, right? Mm, mm. So then as an entrepreneur, you've got to sit and you've got to think, okay, the only thing I truly care about is delivering this technology at scale uh, for, for humanity. And uh, yeah, it's basically being balanced, right? So yeah. if if... Uh, if I've been shown something that is genuinely better, I would consider building on it because all yeah. we care about is the plumbing system. Yeah. Right? However, the plumbing system having a narrative that it does, right, means that you need to have certain primitives first before you can transcend the muck yeah, to the, the next brand level. is pulling you into, right? Yeah. So a brand is very important. So this is why we conducted ourselves a particular way um based on authenticity right because if we're building this technology this plumbing system in order to make humanity honest um, we should also incorporate these technologies in the brand ethos and how we build say a financial uh company to leverage these core principles of technology transparency etc but deliver it in a way that people understand ultimately if, if i hold my money here um, would I get a good service? Would it be a reliable uh, service? Would you actually take your fiduciary responsibilities very seriously? Would you take regulatory obligations, et cetera, very seriously? Would you take AML, KYC, um, and MOD5 regulations very seriously? GDPR requirements, ISO certification requirements. Like, do you take everything seriously, right? So to us, like, okay, yes. But more importantly, this is very, very few people took on this challenge in BSV to go down the regulated S banking route. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I understand why, because it's very freaking expensive, right? And it's very burdensome. However, if you want to make BSV invisible, you need to basically go through these hoops because you need a stable coin. And I understood this years ago. You need a high frequency, low friction, stable coin. That's BSV. Only BSV can deliver that. Because I want to take a penny, I want to take it to the eighth decimal place. Right? Yeah. Because if you have that, you can then deliver an application, say, not too dissimilar to hand cash, right? And it can be genuinely invisible. Like the plumbing of BSV, you take it out the language, right? Um, it is just now this micropayment solution. And then you can have a web-free infrastructure built on top of that. So the way that we were building Gravity is sequentially, right? We have to go through the unique challenges to BSV, get around them, also acquire funding outside of traditional sources, because if you go through that, you're actually kind of getting yourself caught into the very thing you're trying to mitigate, right? So we're doing that pretty well. And then it's the case of, okay, do all the regulatory uh, hoops. So you could then get to the point where strategically you can deploy this strategy. So legally you can actually deploy this strategy. Uh, and then once you've got that component where you've connected the traditional financial system to this new, uh, say transparent, high frequency micropayment uh, environment, you pair 
uh, them together. Now everyone understands the language that we've been trying to speak for the last 12 years, which is internet money, internet money. But there's a billion different variants of internet money now. Yeah, yeah. So what we're doing is creating distortion. How do you cut through distortion? And that's what the gravity strategy uh, was. Um, and it's, it, it has been a challenge. And there has been times along the way where we have considered, say, uh, seeking funding from traditional sources. But there's always been that hesitancy uh, there. Right? It's just, it's, it's, it has a, it's not the right, even with everything it's got, it's, wasn't, it's not the right play, right? Because it doesn't resolve and fix this core challenge initially we have. So there's all that stuff going on, but there's still, with all of that, we fight on and we find a way. The last thing that just got us to the point where, okay, now it's technically and completely economically unfeasible for us to fight through this burden is the uh the activation of trading of bsv at our liquidity provider's desk right? yeah now because again our liquidity provider understands our ethos our thinking we have a relationship with them we have them for years so our liquidity provider is not hostile necessarily right and this is something that the bsv space needs to understand and mature about it's not about hostility it's about economics and resources right if they can't have a reliable way of checking the blockchain because blockchain has gone offline, right? We have dwindling liquidity because most um, credible exchanges no longer list this asset. Yeah. They have lower volumes on this asset than they would do other assets. Right? So they're looking at this economically and saying, we've got X, Y, Z amount of uh, developers. We've got this amount of resources in our bank account. This is the revenue historically this asset has generated for us. This is the tech burden this asset has expensed uh, on us. Should we delist or continue servicing this asset? And they made a financial decision to delist this asset. Right? Now, what was horrible is they gave us 24 hours uh, notice. Right? So they told us on a Friday, um, and we had to offboard everyone on terms of BSV trading on the Monday. So that wasn't nice. And that really- no. I bet uh, that made you sick. I'd be like, oh. But then the question is, okay, well, this was the most credible and last desk left, in our opinion, that worked with this asset. Yeah. Right. So if we retool, which there is options to retool elsewhere, right? There's like uh, at least two that I could think of to retool potentially elsewhere, but Let's be honest, in the landscape of everything that's going on, what is the risk factor and probability that those liquidity providers are going to do exactly the same, the same thing? Yeah. Because the alternative is we go direct to all the exchanges ourselves and we aggregate our own engine. Now, that's a feasible and logical thing. In fact, we were doing that at the beginning. Right? But if you think about that from a, again, fiduciary responsibility, and a security risk factor, I'm amplifying the probability of one of those exchanges going offline with my customer's money exponentially, yeah. right? So I'd rather consolidate that, deal with the desk that has credibility, good balance sheet, and we got good relationship with, right? Because in nine years, I've never lost a penny of client money and I want to maintain that reputation. So there's certain things that we have done that has always proven well to maintain within our principles of this is how we do business. Right? So if it's exception after exception, you can't keep you can't do exceptions when it puts very good risk on client funds now. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. they're now going into an environment that we've all been predicting, and I even done say the um, site series, and the last one being Endgame, right? Where we're in that environment that I spoke about just over a year ago, right? And this so is I, still on your your Bitstock YouTube channel on the podcasting channel, isn't it? So you can, if if anybody's interested, go and watch some of the podcasts because they are really really interesting. Some great conversations get quite deep in stuff as well. So we're in that environment. So now we have systemic risk, right? We have unraveling systemic risk from FTX, uh, uh, even before that BlockFi. It's mm. unraveling, right? We had a deep peg of USDC, SVB's gone offline, Silicon, like it's Silvergate's gone offline. 
Yeah, it's we know it's going to happen to Binance. It's just inevitable. It's just an, it's inevitability, right? So, if you look at the landscape, I'm looking at I'm looking at our limited resources. I'm looking at the landscape, and I'm saying, okay, I don't actually we don't actually have the time factor in order to raise enough cash to go way above, like say, the resource threshold that we need to be, because the only way to fix this is to build our own exchange. Yeah. The only way to fix this is to build our own exchange. Now, Diddy, we knew this. Like we knew this is part of um, the Gravity uh, roadmap internally. It's been very well documented. Uh, David, our CTO, he's actually been building the infrastructure for the last seven, eight months, right? By just doing it bit by bit slowly, uh, we've been building out the infrastructure because it originally started off with, oh, we want limit orders on Gravity app. Right. Okay. That would be a pretty cool feature, right? If you could just place a limit order, you could chill out and trades get activated. For us, it makes economic sense because that means we have more trade volume, right? Um, but believe it or not, to co put a component of limit orders onto the infrastructure that we have, you might as well go the whole hog and build out, build out the exchange, right? So we was going to do this and actually have an exchange running in shadow form in the background. Okay. As the first early stage of building the BSV gold standard exchange. Right? Now, in light of the how the climate's deteriorated so drastically over the last, say, six months, um, now that is now a first forward prerequisite of what's required in this community. Now, I believe 1 billion percent gravity where they're suited in order to build out that exchange. Right? However, we don't, it doesn't need to be us. It has to be someone. And that needs to be coordinated and known who's going to take this responsibility on. Because we can go off and I can go off and say, okay, cool. I'm going to go raise money, which is what we're discussing right now, exclusively okay. to build this exchange because we need this. Right? We've got the know how, we've got the financial know how, the regulatory know how, the legal know how, and we've also got the tech know how to not just build an exchange, to build the fastest exchange in this industry. Right? But I'll be honest, Diddy, if that is not unanimously supported by the biggest names in this community, even BSV at the top, I will question and I would not bother. Yeah. yeah. I'm at that point because I need to see true intent through actions of immediacy presence in the room, not future projecting, presence in the room of positive actions that shows that we are trying to build core infrastructure for this community. Yeah. Um, I can take on the burden, I'm continuing, I've taken on the burden, no problem. I continue to do it and I would do it. And there's a great business opportunity here to do it as well. And you have an ultimate amazing track record of being able to deliver what you say you're going to deliver. Do you know, so that you say it's not, yeah, the, the, the proof of work is already out there. People have seen what you can do. Do you know what I mean? So it's like, I, I do know what you're saying, you know, you need I, I, it's, yeah, like yeah, true, true. Um, we need some unity of understanding. Okay, uh, is this what the big interests in the space strategically, based on their time frame, which I'm not attacking, right? End of the day, uh, on the time frames of say Craig and Calvin, they can play generationally, right? But they can at least play in ten year blocks. There's, I've got nothing against them for playing in ten year yeah. blocks. But what I would then for like to know is how much are you willing to sacrifice in the one to two year short term right because if this as core infrastructure is not addressed that to me is a clear alarm bell signal that for the next one to two years this core aspect not being here needs to be evaluated understood i'm not going to like finish that sentence completely but to me that's a big red flag um, of, of immediate present intentions. It doesn't mean BSV and the strategy of BSV and where it's going um, changes. It doesn't mean I'm not going to keep a very keen, close eye uh, on mm -hmm. it. It doesn't mean that I think there's any other technology that's more suited in order to deliver scale um, and micropayment scale to the world. There mm -hmm. is no other technology. However, I do look overview of like say the landscape and keep abreast of what's been going on yeah and i do question and wonder okay 
Is this more of a, now an IP play? And we are yet to truly understand where the public uh, chain aspect is going to sit. Um, so is this now becoming an end chain play? Um, or are we staying true to this public chain? Because if we are staying true to this public chain, then having people get ease of access, a core gold standard to have liquidity, which also allows the biggest holders in this space to get in and out of their own positions. Right? If we're going to aid the cannibalism of not having that infrastructure, I would just like to know that sooner rather than later. Yeah. So that's, yeah. that's what, so these things have also influenced why we decided, okay, bend the knee, don't have the resources to overcome the next wave if this hits us again, bend the knee, uh, and get clarity because the next play clearly is all right we've got the resources we've got the um so we've got the technical know-how um and and, and the skill set in order to resolve this problem let's get clarity before we go gung-ho trying to resolve this this problem um, mm -hmm. i think after the years uh, i think that's pretty fair uh, analysis and a way to look at this with everything going on so, so it's a lot really thank you yeah. Michael. there's a lot really going on there so what i mean that's your position at the moment and i can really relate to this because i've been talking to some people that were on about making a couple of films and stuff and one of the things they said was the the problem is that people in that industry the funding comes from people who hold btc and ethereum and they it's almost as if they're purposely holding back from funding projects because they don't want it to succeed and this is from a film funding perspective of anything to do with a film say about you know the birth of bitcoin okay so i really relate because that's an industry that i know really really well um and that's quite frustrating because you know there's a good story there so it appears from from that side of things and my side of things that things are they're early it's too early but everybody knows like you say it's like with um vhs and betamax yeah um mini disc versus cd yeah one might be a superior technology but that may not necessarily be the technology that actually becomes the best yeah. note so i i resonate with that if it wasn't a case of being an asshole inviting your friends over right if i've got the first dvd player diddy right and i say diddy listen i've got high definition movies come over mm -hmm. to my house let's watch terminator 2 together on my dvd new brand new dvd players the only one in the world right i get the popcorn in i get some wine like we order a a, a takeout let's watch terminator 2 okay most people who are your friends will accept that invitation okay and they will come and watch mm -hmm. the latest technology with a favorite movie okay now if i take the bsv approach <laughs> or you vhs prick right <laughs> watch a terminator 2 you can barely even work out what's going on on the screen Plus, you don't even have the latest flat screen. You've got a standard tube-like TV, right? Yeah. Or you, or you see you, I'm not going to finish the rest of that spelling. Come over to mine and let's watch the latest movie. Like, you know, I'm like, you know, know, yeah, it's yeah. Right. not the most friendliest of atmospheres to be wanting to actually uh, go and spend some time you're, in. You're in not, that's, what, that's how we've conducted ourselves. And that's what I've very much tried to stay away from stay away from all the drama, stay away from all the toxicity, try and actually have some critical um, like pushback on certain things. But even that gets taken in a very sensitive way. Um, and you can't constructively have a conversation about how we can do things better. Right. Um, so a lot of it's on us. I don't want to be conspiratorial on this. Like I can start being very conspiratorial, put blame everywhere, but I'm, that's not it. I, I'm not even blaming um, the say leadership of, of BSV is what it is, right? But if we're going to resolve it, we can resolve it, okay? But we need to have core infrastructure. 
yeah, yeah. that core infrastructure is being denied or being prevented internally, that's the biggest alarm bell of all. Like that, that to me is the biggest alarm bell of all because how long are we going to sit and wait for everything to go offline on us to sit in the, ironically, I'm in the kitchen, kitchen of fire saying everything's okay and actually not have any true power and ownership in our own hand to survive the storm that we're all cheering for. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. How does I that mean, make yeah. sense? No, it doesn't. It's a no-brainer, really. I mean, at the end of the day, put it down to base, back, um, basic kind of needs. You need a roof over your head, you need shelter, you need water, you need food, you know? Yeah. If you cannot sustain any of those things and you seriously need to look at what you're doing and you need to move to where it is that you can sustain those things for your own self-preservation physically and mentally um so in the basicest of forms is kind of what's happening within the the yeah the bigger kind of picture of things however like you say move in five ten years in the future things could be extremely different but the core is now what's happening there exactly. yeah. and i'm saying like humbly i don't understand the strategy and i would like to get clarity of the strategy before i take my next move in this space yeah. Uh, for now, I pause, I yield, um, and it's painful to do so. Right? Yeah. But I yeah. pause, I yield, and I request clarity before I pick up my suit and armor and I go to war again. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I will go to war again for us, 100%. I would do it, right? But I need to know it's going to give us now robustness. If it's not adding genuine robustness where we can weather the storm that we're welcoming, I, I think now I'm putting my own clown hat on um, yeah. and I need to wake up and smell the coffee. Well, it's a good analogy, isn't it? If you go to war and you know you're never going to come back to war, do you really want to risk your life to that point? You have a choice, you know. And actually, I think most people, if they, if they were given the choice of, you know, that, you would say no. Thanks. And, I, 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 and I, what I'm saying is, like, I'm not saying that this, I could be very much wrong. Like there are pieces on this chessboard that I just don't see, I might not see, right? Mm. I think I've got a very good analysis and a lot of yeah. years on my belt. Exactly. You said nine years, nine to, years, yeah. To understand, especially the BSV journey and story adequately enough, have enough feedback from other very prominent entrepreneurs in the space about present events and what's been going on behind the scenes to be like, okay, I need clarity now because if there are things that might be more beneficial that explains why we're taking these particular uh lines of strategy cool can i hear about them please yeah I mean, my next move, right because yeah. there might be something about like about the fa now like, like, mm -hmm. like amazing like, like this 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 is the strategy i can't believe i didn't yeah. see this is brilliant this is genius right so, so I'm let me but yeah <laughs> I mean, that's, well, that's good let me ask you a question then because like you um plexar okay so you place you were based at plexar and um that's where the block dojo is yeah and recently i heard that um craig massey has got a new business and his business is going to be kind of a dojo thing but with ai so where are you on ai where, where, I mean, where do you sit with AI? I should imagine a brain like yours, you probably love it, but actually I can pro also see, you can probably see the bigger picture of it as well. So go on, feed me some info, your, your impressions of AI. So, love to know. I'm chuckling because um, I'm not gonna speak like this journey's, uh, this, this, this is the end of a chapter, the book's still ongoing. Um, so mm. I'm still on the basis on the fact that the book's still got ongoing. Uh, if it was the closure of the book, I will answer this and like, I'll give the whole data dump. Um, I've been teasing this for years, Diddy. I've been doing something very specific, very deliberate. And each coin geek presentation I have done sows a thread. Mm. It's a continuation of the story of the story. And I have used symbols and I have laid messages in my presentation slides that will later on, I will articulate. Right. Now, one in particular, and one I got a lot of pushback on, was about the squares and circles. Right. 
I was wearing the yellow hoodie because I think I think I was calling it London to be honest. Um, and I freestyled. I went off script. And I just spoke on, obviously narrating for the presentation. Okay. Now, what I explained. Please go back and watch this video. It is really good. I remember it actually. I will find the link. I will put it in the description box. Yeah. We are living the consequences of exactly what I was articulating in that presentation, which is the body cannot exist without the spirit. Okay. Yeah. Now, da Vinci, the Vitruvian man, this is what is symbolically representing. The feet to base, arms extended is the square. Okay. The square has a beginning and it has an end. That's your physical form. It has a beginning and an expiration date, right? Birth, death. The jumping jack position of the human form is a circle. And that represents the spirit. Something that has no beginning and it has no end. Right? So the spirit continues and the spirit is the talk that drives the body and reincarnates the body. Bitcoin, the body, the creation, the square. That's everything that Craig's working on is the square. The message that I try to make so bone clear is what Craig has created does not exist without the spirit. Okay. The gravity logo is the spirit. It's the circle of the Da Vinci Vitruvian man squared circle right? it's, it's the circle okay because the circle is what animates the circle is you and i thinking and then making an input on our touch screen device and giving an instruction to an api that then hits this system it is us it's community we are the processor mm. bitcoin is the the hard drive and the random access memory. Mempool, random access memory, long-term storage, that's your physical hard drive. But those components won't process jack shit without the CPU. The CPU yeah. is humanity. And plus all the machines that we're gonna add. Yeah. Right? Now, also in that presentation, I said, what if you can step inside of Bitcoin? Okay. I was, and I was referenced, and we've done augmented reality stuff in the mm. background as I'm saying it. Okay. What the gravity vision is truly to be is I was speaking about chat GBT capabilities. Then you combine that with this database system and a financial system, a bank on top of that, that speaks those two languages, communicates between them. You say gravity, I've got a hundred thousand pounds generate me a business model that can provide me 10% growth a year over the next three years. Right? And show me within the pharmaceutical industry, uh, beauty industry, fashion industry. Mm -hmm. And it will create models. Yeah. And also it will do it based on your spending plans, what it knows about you. But you need to sovereign ownership that data pool. Right? So that's what it was always designed to be. So to me, going, going, going forward with AI, that's a natural progression. But do not be mistaken that these come back and join each other. Yeah. Right? yeah. They're, 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 perfect, they're perfect way to come back and join each other because the only thing that I find um, scary with AI is not understanding how my machine went from this state of understanding to this state of understanding and not being able to do an, an adequate audit trap. Yeah, and this is where in the middle of that circle is your regulation, is your law, is your, you know, all the, the real necessary components to make sure that this is a safe, efficient and effective way of working. And it's not going to already, AI is taking over a lot of jobs in a lot of industries. So a lot of people are having to retrain in trades that AI cannot do because they're being made redundant. So even though this is a phenomenal 
invention and something that's going to take us forward into the future, is it going to actually be detrimental because it's going to take so much away from humanity? Because some people want to build art, they want to make music, they want to edit videos, whereas AI can now do all of that for them. Some people have jobs sitting and doing business plans for people. This is all going to be taken away from them. So there is this kind of outer existential crisis going on as well as to whether this, even though so at the moment, I had a chat with Dr. Ava Porritt and she was saying, you know, AI currently is at a zero age. It is a zero age. Yeah. So if it's a zero age, AI can already come in and disrupt the entertainment industry, for example. Yeah. And a lot of the jobs in the entertainment industry are being taken over by AI. And this is at age zero. What's it going to do when it gets to 10, 20, 100? If we're only at age zero now, and we've already got, is it GPT-4 has already come out? The, 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 what we, we are not independent from anything we are analyzing, even if it's AI. Okay? Mm. You need to understand we are not independent from anything we are analyzing. So to call something artificial actually fits outside of what I just said. This is interesting. This is also where Joel and um, Craig, I know it because Joel calls it intelligent, intelligent automation. It's not artificial intelligence. It's intelligent automation. It, yeah. it, it is, but that also tricks us into believing we can control it. Okay. And because again, say, we are not independent from the thing it is that we are observing. The reason why mm. I say this is light and darkness is separated by a light switch right so what we are and the mirror we present influences what this becomes right so what i find when you look at it in the context of the whole i see this journey starting off ironically with paris hilton Okay, this is interesting. Tell me more. Why would I say Paris Hilton? Okay. I don't know. Come on, tell me more. <laughs> Paris Hilton was the first, say, social influencer yeah. that started to make a deep impact in the societal concept of what is publicly acceptable behavior. Mm. She passed on the mantle to Kardashian, yeah. right? who then took yeah. it to a different plane. Yeah. And I have witnessed through my growth in my generation, the behavioral change in women. Okay. I, yeah, no, I agree completely. And I'm a lot older than you are. So yeah, yeah. Now, reason why I say that you have, this is important to understand the context of the whole. Okay. It's if this strategy of influence is so effective, clearly it is because all the AI today is actually utilizing this strategy and selling advertisements along the way of this strategy, right? Mm -hmm. Transhumanism is the bigger concern mm -hmm. because the way that people are going to have that Kim Kardashian effect in this new world, right? Is upgrading bodily components mm -hmm. in order to maintain job um edge say efficiency it's no but, different than saying get the so you can yeah. make employment two years ago and mr beast being one of the biggest influencers on youtube under pewdiepie um as a male influencer has already said that he would be first in line for alan's um little chip in his brain so you've already your point has already been proven because Mr. Beast has already said that. And you think about the influence that he already casts on quite a young generation of, of, of boys, basically. So it's like, and all the craziness, all the chaos, all the dexterity is always based off a primitive. Yeah. And the people who run the world have their set of primitives of their strategies. They have their goal in sight. These are the strategies they deploy, which we perceive because they're always changing, right? Well, Paris Hilton's old school news, and now it's they like, even Kim Kardashian is becoming old school news. Now it's yeah, no, yeah, 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 completely. But it's the same freaking primitive. Yeah. Right. So now I'm going to use it on LGBTQ. Now I'm going to use it on racism. 
right? Now I'm going to have um, every white person on social media posting up a black square in uni, right? Like it's bullshit. It's just bullshit. Everything's bullshit, right? Yeah. It's the same bullshit strategies to call us into a outsourcing of our thought process into a herd, herd mentality where mm -hmm. we're always worried about fitting in. Mm -hmm. right? So you have a society that's always worried about fitting in. It's very easy to integrate the more insidious components of this strategy. Right? Now, if we were personally sovereign in our thoughts, in our hearts, in our self, AI is not a bad thing, did he? AI is not a bad thing, right? Because it's a reflection of who we are, mm -hmm. right? Now, definitely, I want to audit through it. So right now, we're in amongst the chaos, right? So I want to know, okay, are you malevolent or are you benevolent, right? If your AI engine is hacking systems over here and it's flipping it and selling it on the dark web, you're malevolent. We've done yeah. all that. Well, let's yeah. track if you, you are politically biased, you're still malevolent because you need to be neutral in everything. Am I right? as well i mean am i right in that as well i mean we've noticed recently there is political bias in written into this is what craig said it's like like it doesn't fix crime bitcoin bitcoin does not fix crime no. um, bitcoin's a mirror right it helps, you track um, it. it allows you to track it it allows you to show you who you are mm. right and if we are shown who we are we can actually make people take accountability yeah, better choices. It's like exactly. Adam and Eve in the in the Garden of Eden. You know, there is a tree, and there is a tree of knowledge. You know, there are two trees. The serpent comes along and tries to convince Eve to eat from the tree of knowledge. So she does do. She's got the knowledge. Humanity is born. Mm. It's you know, it, it, it's that kind of thing. Do you take the knowledge or do you leave the knowledge? Do you stay as you are? Do you grow? But in that, it's going to be painful. There are going to be a lot of lessons learned. Um, yeah. But we're, at, we're at a point. We are at a point. There's like, even this, you can't isolate, um, say, how AI is going to transpire without talking about all the other components on planet Earth, right? Because this is all predicated on, all right, is Google going to remain in power? Is Facebook going to remain in power? Twitter, we're seeing a transition. How is that going to play out? Are we going to see more continuation than a more follow one from Twitter's example of Facebook expose or Google expose, right? The world is changing. And this again is another thing that I was speaking on back in 2017, 2016, mm -hmm. I think I put out a video called the Awakening Series, right? Now, if you go back and watch that video and you look at where the world today and what's going on. In fact, I even had two employees walk out uh, on me when I posted that video because it's so controversial, right? But if you look at the concert and the, and the landscape of where the world is uh, like today, like we're going through that transition, like this is the yeah. transition, okay? And I consider these components of what's going on on this planet, like, yo, planet Earth is wild right now, right? Because this really is our Earth experience. Earth is going through an experience. Right? Mm -hmm. but also, I believe our whole solar system is going through an experience, mm -hmm. right? which is why I'm trying to sell us this whole climate change BS narrative that they're trying to do as well. The sun uh, is changing, and all the planets in the solar system, as a result of that, yeah. is changing. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I believe those who have been running this planet understand and are aware that these changes aren't good for them. So they are deploying their strategies faster, more panicked, more crazed, more confusion, more confusion because we are at a point where they're wounded, but also we have to understand a tiger is at its most dangerous when wounded. Yeah, it's gonna fight back. Like you said, you're ready to pick up arms and you will fight at the right point when you want to fight. Absolutely. But anything that is put into a cage or cornered or attacked is going to bite back at some point. It's inevitable, you know, so. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, AI, Bitcoin has a very important role in the AI story. Uh, so in summary of the question, Bitcoin has a very important role in the AI story. In fact, I'll go as far as to say it is the defining factor that puts us into the mark of the beast system or makes the beast our bitch. Because um, Bitcoin's the cage. Yeah. 
So, but we have to deploy at scale, and this, this is the frustration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's that's why they're scared of it because it, you know, it is, and that's why it keeps being depressed, uh, suppressed. So, talking about what we are as well, then, what's your take on UFOs? Because this is the newest narrative, which was inevitable as well. I mean, I saw this coming for a long time, but I know you like the Anunnaki story. So, um, come on, I'm really come on. I'm pretty sure I'm somewhere talking well, about this as well. So I said, this... I definitely have an Instagram live where I spoke on before the um, elections took place. Mm. I said they're going to use lockdowns in order to do fraudulent mailing votings and they're going to steal the elections. Right? And that's all been vindicated. Yeah, but this was before they even done it, right? I was saying this is what this is the strategy they're going to use. Because it's so obvious to those that can see. So then obviously they've done that, but then also I'm pretty sure on that live I was speaking on the next stage of this. It's like, because in the original Awakening video, I spoke on um, the sealed indictments um, and the way that this transition is going to end ultimately is we're going to have Nuremberg 2.0 like scenario where the crimes against humanity will be answered for. Now, since that video, they've committed publicly mm. the most heinous crimes against humanity. Yeah. Right? So they've piled on more and more and more. Uh, and I said, when eventually when they're at their weakest we will know the signal is when they go for the fake ufo invasion attack they start they start whipping out ufos in front of us okay now i'm gonna say this clearly and i'm gonna own it okay it is of my understanding for all the research i have done which originates from me knowing personally gary mckinnon when i was 17 years old the guy that hacked nasa largest military hack in human history he was at, uh, he came to like my mom's house and he was helping me on a project when I was like 17 years old. I had some good time speaking to Gary. Okay. Now, I knew from then we are not alone. Mm -hmm. I knew from then NASA knew we are not alone. I knew mm -hmm. from then there were images of things on the moon that should not be there. Yeah. I also knew from then that there was a file on NASA's server that says there's off planet operatives, human beings who work off planet 17 years old i'm being told from the most credible source who at the time barack obama was trying to extradite and throw guantanamo bay right i'm getting told this story in my freaking bedroom at my mom's house yeah this is yeah so that's my understanding from a 17 year old kid right what i found fascinating was that to me was cool i really assumed that anyway like mathematically i was like yeah of course okay what i was fixated on was like, how are we hiding and paying for this because I knew that we'd been reverse engineering technology. And then I came to realize through studying the work of say, um, Jordan Maxwell and to like a bunch of other people, so this has been going on since 17, like very aggressively since 17, and meeting some incredible, amazing people as well. Uh, that from my understanding, Nazi Germany left Earth in back in the 1930s. They had space faring abilities in, back in 1930s most certainly by the early 40s, right? So I'm looking at this thinking, okay, then I started looking into like Hitler, what he was really into. Um, guy had a huge fixation and fascination with ancient uh, archaeology. Yeah, relevant, and uh, spirit, of spirit destiny. Yeah. Um, like we and done, also Antarctica. Right? Done expeditions to Antarctica, sent armadas to Antarctica during World War Two. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they they were were they not like the first people to actually put a permanent kind of base on there? And I thought that from from my readings, um, that's where I thought a lot of the UFO activity, the German UFO activity, was kind of based. Am I yeah, wrong? Or am I wrong? So these objects, like, yes, they're not. They're, the technology does not originate from us, one hundred percent. Okay, mm. but. I believe 99% probability these are our craft they're displaying, right? Uh, but these are the black budget projects, okay? So they've got these assets. They've got these assets. But revealing these assets is so hyperdimensionally interlaced. Even if it's our assets, displaying this does such a consciousness upgrade, also cosmically sanctioning 
others to do the same. Yeah. yeah. So if we display that, that we have this technology, from my understanding, is free party, free game for anyone else to reveal the same, whether yeah. you're human or non-human, reveal the same. Right. So for them to start teasing this is not a joke. Like strategically, mm-hmm. everything they have built isn't because they're hoarding money. They are hoarding power, assets, knowledge, indigenous information that actually predates yeah. the indigenous information. Yeah, 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 yeah. So no, makes sense talk about folks like groups who run things. Uh, well, all of this stuff basically links back to who are we really? Um, who were the gods that are referenced across multiple different uh, disciplines, religions, etc. There are people who know answers, and those mm-hmm. people run things. Right? Yeah. So if, if there's a transition and shift, um, this to me is a huge signal that we're on the cusp of a very big um, shift because you don't you don't roll out this play unless you're very desperate and you're trying to distract the world away from things you do not want them to truly know, such as maybe there's some arrest going on, maybe there's there's some strategic removals of power um, and they're trying to size up basic distraction tactics. Yeah, cheer shuffling. So there are several old paintings, I mean, like go back to the 1500s and stuff, where there are depictions of um, UFOs. I think there's a Madonna and Child which also has depiction of a UFO in the background or what could be construed as UFO. And there are cave drawings and cave paintings, which also, especially in South America, which also have UFOs on them. So, I mean, what's your take on that? Have you looked into that? Because uh, you, you're yeah, I'm actually, I'm actually, so when I done the interview with Nassim, the Truth and Light episode, Nassim has a plethora of these artifacts. Um, mm. I, he actually, I was actually, we hold some up to the camera. Uh, we talk through some of them. Um, these are like Aztec, Asian, Mexican uh, artifacts that predate the, the oldest ones, 14,000 years. And it's well, that's that, interesting because that predates the flood. Yes. So this, this is 14,000 years old. Uh, and that one was the head of an uh, extraterrestrial. And there was like earlier ones uh, that were 6,000 years old, 4,000 years old. Uh, with very clear UFOs and also like birth uh, and reincarnation cycles with like UFOs uh, on the top. You've got beams coming out of the UFOs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like it's very, very clear. And these things are dated, like genuinely. I've seen the carbon dating results uh, of like some of these artifacts, uh, as well as I've actually held, uh, I've held a, what's it called? Paracas skull, so the elongated skulls. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Peruvian ones. So they're really, there's loads of those in Peru. In fact, yeah. Brian Forrester has a, a Inca trails. And I've, I've seen verified <laughs> DNA results of not being human. Like, yeah. verified results of that sample, which I held, not being human. So what do you think, though? I mean, the, the, the schools, though, the elongated schools, because there is the school wrap-in. So do you think, though, that that was to honour whoever came before? Because... The, the elongated schools are supposed to be like hierarchy of yeah. uh, royalty. Yeah, an image of their gods. Um, yeah. But that doesn't explain the genuine skulls uh, that have been discovered because some of these skulls are actually larger than what a human head would be perceived. Yeah, yeah. Quite, quite yeah. sizably so, right? Um, but question I have for you. So if this interstellar-like travel existed or UFO technology existed back then, right? We're both of that understanding. Mm. Um, I mean, Pandora's box has multiple applications, right? So when we talk about unified field theory, like the work of Tesla, work of people like Nassim, et cetera, like you could come out from a variety of different angles. One person wants to do healing, the other person wants to travel the stars, right? One person just wants energy. Um, but it, it this Pandora's box, right? So also as part of that would be time travel. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Do, you, do you believe in time travel? And do you think time travel exists? Well, what is time? That, that means you need to explain the concept of time completely, relatively, so that people understand what time is. And time can be anything. You can freeze time within your own time limit. Well, let's, let's go for the sake of the context of the question, that time is the recording mechanism of movement. 
which is isn't that what Einstein has said about it's a clock you know you record it's like yeah um there is there is again there is physical time there is uh astrophysical time there is interdimensional time if you believe in in that there is hallucinogenic time you know all of these are different concepts of time your body ages depending on what you put within that biological system and that will age you in either quickly or or not quickly there are diseases that you can get that could age your body quicker or not but does that age your mind as well like time is a con time the way that we understand it is a man-made concept so that we can understand things linearly you know is how I see it. But when you get out of that realm and you go into the metaphysical, time can be anything. One one God day is a thousand man years. So time can be anything. But if it's astro, like like you know, if it's space time, how how long does it take to get to Mars? How long does it actually take to get to the Moon? It doesn't take. You know, how long does it tra- take to travel 30 miles at 30 miles an hour in a car? It takes 30 miles. You know, 30 miles is an hour. It takes an hour to get there. I've got to finish the sentence by saying it per hour, right? Uh, yeah. In order to measure uh, the, the fact that you've got from one point to another point. But that's, again, that's man-made time per hour for whatever we are, whatever calendar we are using at the moment. And the, I, I know in 11, I think it was might get this this wrong it might be 11 52 or 12 52 could be 12 52 in britain we switched from one calendar to another calendar and we lost 11 days i think you know because we went to the newest roman calendar that we julianus calendar or whatever it was i can't remember gregorian calendar to julianus calendar or the other way around can't remember which way it was but we lost 11 days just like that because we had to switch to a different calendar so when you've gone from a Mayan calendar to a Chinese calendar to a Gregorian calendar to another calendar to an atomical clock, and we are specifically, I mean, there's something about the, the number 13. This is the problem with me is I don't retain all the information all the time. Simplify. Um, what if the concept is as simple as it is the process in which God documents memory? Because if I think about really simply, okay, in the alchemical principle, right, movement, right, mm-hmm. one cell dividing or doubling, chicken or egg, Where's no. two is a movement. And in order for there to be a, a growth, whether that becomes a banana, whether that becomes a human, whether that becomes whatever, there needs to be a sequence of movements Events, yeah. to coordinate the outcome. Now, what influences the sequence of movements naturally is always going to be environment, right? That defines if something becomes a banana or if it becomes like a monkey, right? Mm. But ultimately, there's a sequence which is documented, right? In order to provide that that progression. Now, the Greeks, uh, so say for instance, uh, Zeus's messenger, Hermes. Hermes is just thof from say hermetic principles, mm. right? In the Greek uh, tradition is called Hermes, why? Right? Because he hears all, right? That's why he's Zeus's messenger, because he hears all, right? And that's a way that they rewrapped it, but what does Stoph stand for, right? He's the Atlantean priest king, the keeper of time, right? The Akashic records, it's like a symbolic representation of explaining the records that contain everything, mm-hmm. right? But everything, what all movement that is created, and within documenting all of that movement, you 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 can understand and audit what has become and and how something has evolved. Right. And this is why I see Bitcoin as the timekeeper, right? Uh, and, and, and Bitcoin, I think, I like if Craig did have an avatar, he should actually be Thoth. Right. That 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 should be Craig's avatar because Bitcoin is like the digital representation of the Kashuk records, like keeper of time. That's why everything's like stamped. Like, everything is t- stamped. Yeah. But the reason we're asking this uh, like question is because if we really have cracked that that door, and you th- really you think really really think about this, and these things that I like think about on on these types of subjects, not necessarily to have a determination and answer, but interesting things to think about, such as 
virtual reality technology is really, really growing to become a very like high definition, very reality. Like I can imagine easily what it's going to be like in 15 years, like 10 years, 15 years, it's going to be crazy. Right. Mm. Also GPU computation is becoming insane. Like graphics are becoming like really close to being life. Like again, yeah. 15 years, 20 years, it's going to be like indistinguishable. And then we're going to have uh, brain interfaces, sensory interfaces, right. That through sensory interfaces creates the chemical reactions within the body to simulate whatever it is that I'm going through within that virtual environment, right? So the question is, if, if time travel, which I believe has been created, uh, what well, has been invented, then nature creates self-organizing systems. Mm -hmm. right? How do we not know we're on a continuous loop? Well, this is, yeah, this is true. Right? Think, yeah. Think, continuous uh, loop, right, where we are self-organizing ourselves and based on, like, say, this, you have a primitive, but the dexterity is created from the primitives, right, so you can have different outcomes of, of say, subsequent uh, loops, but that, if that is truly what's going on, because the likes of these technologies being in the hands of certain individuals and then they start playing with it in a certain way, um you really this, these are things that i ponder i like really question i look at i think okay well ai 15 uh years like vr capabilities uh, 15 years century inputs in like uh 15 years i mean how do you know you're not hooked up to one of these machines right freaking now <laughs> well it's true and and if you think of this in a this is comes the way i think about this as well is one part of humanity currently is that far advanced with a technology okay and you're going vr da, 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 and everything else and chips in the brain blah blah so one one part of humanity has got this far into the future technology yeah and then they go and see a tribe in the amazon who have no idea there's your alien even though you're on the same planet you're the same part of humanity but one is using technology and one isn't so how do we know that that is not also we are the aliens because exactly. we so what if we are the gods that we yeah. are, well, we are the gods. Right. isn't that something that they found in our dna but it was written yahweh was written in that into our dna but we are the gods but that would go to a point of then suggesting that 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 particular point in time when the dna was changed to have the word yahweh imprinted in it and how do they knew that but you know that's another question that was a specific time frame ago yeah. so that was maybe ten thousand years ago but we know that in antarctica if you drill through two miles worth of core of ice there is lush green vegetation evidence of lush green vegetation that shows that it was a lush green fertile land with now two miles of ice on top of it so this loop that you're talking about the loop has to get from start to start it goes in a loop so it always goes to so is that or is this like a, an egg timer we have so long in humanity to get back to this point and then it starts all over again and does this not but also condition, be... condition so i believe this is what's going on and i think in context of what you mentioned adam and eve right i think the snake is actually a misunderstood symbol um like the snake symbolically is hold on keeper of knowledge uh, also, yeah. like symbolically, as it goes up, your 33 vertebrae is a symbol of like your health, your understanding. Like, yeah, because that isn't that Kundalini yoga as well? That's how you get your Kundalini. Yeah. Uh, but if the snake's head bites its tail, the end is the beginning and the beginning is the end. Exactly. Exactly. So I think, based on, say, this thought process, is nature creates self organizing systems. So yeah. going back to the whole time thing. If I can say interstellarly travel, portal travel, where my distance is so non-local to here that mm -hmm. the weekend over there is a thousand years here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which yeah. then makes complete sense. Is nothing more complicated than Sims, okay? Because I come here on a school project with some seeds, I chuck them in the ocean, I go away, I come back, I got fucking whales yeah right so when we get into the subject like it it goes into loads of different 
directions, right? So when we talk about, okay, artifacts and it's like, yeah, like, and even in the beginning, God's created the heavens and the earth, mm-hmm. right? Uh, even that's encoded in our hands, right? There's this, if there's, there's a lot of information out there, um, but the more that I sift through it and go through it and I question that one, then I see technological advancement developments, where they're going, what it actually means and how we can actually recreate a lot of the things that we thought were only fantasy very close uh, in the next five, 10 years now, it does make me think about this, this loop cycle. Yeah. Right? Um, I think ultimately to discern the light from the darkness, even if we do purge all the darkness in the cleansing process, which I'm still positive is going to happen, um, Bitcoin's role in ensuring that the darkness, the shadows do not come back, I can't continue to articulate how important its role is. And this is why I need my clarity. <laughs> like I need my clarity now because I really want to understand, um, do we understand truly the importance of this technology and, I, and how seriously I would take it? And this is where, again, I want to say this humbly, there might be pieces to this chessboard that Cray, Calvin, etc. see that I genuinely do not see and understand. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, and I would love to get further understanding of those, right? So I'm, I'm, I'm really humbling with that, okay, there might be some genuine stuff, I just don't understand. But we have been dragging our feet and I think we could have been a lot more effective, right? So this is my frustrations on obviously like gravity, you need to like obviously outcome with, with gravity. There could have been things clearly we could have done better in order to prevent this scenario. Cool. And I take all the accountability and responsibility on my shoulders for that. Um, but then now I'm evaluating saying, okay, I'm ready to go at it again. Now I'm looking at like the landscape and I'm saying, all right, well, I want to go at it, um, but I need these, these things clarified uh, first because they're not clear. And mm-hmm. I don't, there's no one that I've spoken to um, that doesn't in some way feel the same. Michael, I think that's a great place to end within yeah. an hour. Thank you so much um, for this really wonderful conversation as well. I love talking to you. I always love talking to you because I know that you go into things that I'm really, like, really heartfelt again, you know, about and everything. So, um, yeah, that's your Bitcoin analogy and your Bitcoin story. Yeah. I don't know what else to say, actually, because, like, it's so profound, everything, really, when you go into the, the... you know you look deeply into it it's a living breathing kind of being within a living breathing being within a living breathing planet you know everything is yeah 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 i just want to say to everyone that has supported uh and utilized the gravity service i thank you we love you and just want to really really just tell everyone is because of you guys that's kept us going for so long going after challenge after challenge and after challenge after challenge uh, with with all things BSV, and if it wasn't for the energy that you guys were giving us, um, we never would have lasted this long. So I just want to say thank you to everyone that supported us. And yeah, it's sad that we are closing this chapter, but, I'm but hoping, it's a chapter. Yeah, I'm hoping it's just a chapter, and it's not closing the book. But like I said, anyone that wants to reach out on the basis of understanding, and getting clarity, and also think it's a great idea in order to uni- unify, unite around getting a Bitcoin SV exchange done, built. We want to talk to you because uh, these are general conversations that are happening now and the more people who know that this is important um reach out to me let's have, let's have this conversation thank you so much all the best